ones. I know Change Now supports a ton of other layer ones. Like you could do Bitcoin to Ethereum, right? You could do Bitcoin to Pulse probably. I haven't tested that myself, but that probably that trading pair probably works. I know you can do things like Phantom to Pulse. You could probably go from BSC to Pulse. I saw Hans Crypto put out a tweet where he just went from BSC straight to Pulse. And that transaction is going to be infinitely, not infinitely, but 100x cheaper than going from uh, from the bridge. Now, the thing is, if you're a big player, the advice is different for everyone, a little bit different for everyone. Obviously, not financial advice. Um, do your own research, like play with these tokens at your own risk. But if you're entering with 10K, yeah, SparkSwap has a bridge from Arbitrum and BSC works good and that's a really good way like if you only want to enter a hundred or even maybe a, like five hundred dollars like maybe uh, if the GUI is out of control like you don't want to get chopped up especially when you look at like what pulse can do if you can get like half a million more pulse because you didn't have to pay a transaction fee that's kind of huge because that could amount to like maybe maybe one thousand maybe two thousand dollars in the future which is still like you could buy a computer a macbook you could live for like that's someone's probably someone's uh, bi-weekly or maybe even monthly paycheck. So getting good order execution is very important. If you're entering 10K, you could probably go through the bridge and pay the $50 transaction fee. That's probably okay. But if you're entering $100, you should probably use a, another service that offers like a, a lower fee or a different network that has a, a lower fee as well. So th those are... Those are some takeaways just for when you're onboarding into Pulse Chain. Obviously, uh, not not financial advice or anything, just uh, sort of education. Yeah, I actually talked about recently just speaking about the bridge. Of it's it's Omni Bridge, so it supports EVM chains. I, I don't know why in the future we wouldn't have a drop down because like right now, you go to the bridge, and you know you click on bridge, and then you go there, and it, it's it's Ethereum. Right, you got Ethereum, the Pulse Chain, Pulse Chain to Ethereum. Why in the future? I, I, I can definitely imagine a future where we have BSC, you know, a Gnosis chain. Let's see what I talked about here. I looked up a few different ones um, that are just common EVM chains that are that OmniBridge is closely associated associated with. So just because it only says Ethereum today, and I know we got you know SparkSwap and and other community uh, bridges and stuff out there too, but I, I cannot. I cannot imagine a future where this only says Ethereum all the time. Like, why wouldn't the devs eventually upgrade it to do other chains if it can do other chains? If this is the, you know, to, to me, it reminds me of like the, the PulseX thing where there's not a lot of features there. It's just got the basics and stuff. And then over time, when it actually works for onboarding, they start hitting, okay, limit orders, you know, single size stake, like whatever, whatever cool stuff uh, may be on the roadmap that we have no expectations for. But like, it totally makes sense to me. This would have a drop down. Oh, you want to go from Ethereum? You want to go to BSC? You want to go from Gnosis, whatever chain? Uh, and maybe even more, more than EVM. Maybe they'll have other supported ones too. But I know OmniBridge supports more than just Ethereum. So why why couldn't we support more Ethereum in the future? And that's good for everyone too, right? Because if you want to get more adoption, more onboards, like if people are already on the BSC, or already on other chains, and you could just, if you could add that, uh, feature in and just allow them to easily bridge over without having to like think too hard because I know a lot of people like they're not about to go do the research find the website or find pulse coins list find the website from there like etc 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 like when especially when they know like uh the bridge website like it's all like it's all mumble jumble now there's no like uh exact url go real com is the way though um, I've heard of that one but, I've heard of that one. um but even when you're looking at like, as you were saying, like the upgrades and stuff, like these could be huge sort of like, nar not I guess narratives in the future where like, uh, if you're here now and there's the chain's new, right? Like there's nothing, not nothing, but there's not a whole lot of features coming in right now. In the future, once you see these features coming in, people love upgrades. Like if you guys remember when ETH 2.0 came out, um, it kind of like snapped Ethereum out of its bear market. Like from there on, even I think during the FTX crash, it didn't, it didn't get hurt as bad as for, because of the, because uh, uh, it had some of the narrative run from the uh, ETH 2.0 stuff. So I guess people love 
to buy on to like narratives and upgrades and things like this and new features so like the fact that we don't have any now is kind of bullish because in the future we're probably going to have limit orders on pulse x and people are probably going to love people are going to love that and it's going to be great and people are probably going to come over and play some limit orders on pulse x and use up the buy and burn and et cetera et cetera et cetera so yeah yeah i think just the point of you know well i think we'll always have the community doing like even today, like when I do limit orders, I use Omnis, I use Tetra, uh, Omnis.tetra.run works great um, and all that stuff. But I know majority of people coming in the ecosystem, getting on board and stuff, they're going to use the official apps. They're going to use, uh, you know, PulseX, they're going to use the official bridge, they're going to use all this stuff. And like, no matter how much, like it's always going to be, I, I believe it's always going to be Hex, it's going to be the premier uh, DeFi product. It's going to be the premier, the premier CD, the bank, the, you know, all that stuff. Um, and then, you know, Pulse Chain, you got the native currency, you got Pulse X, the, the premier decks with all the liquidity or, or most liquidity and all that stuff. And I welcome any other, it's not like we're going to be like, no, no, nobody else can accumulate that much liquidity. Please, I hope to see a day when we got, let me just pull up DeFi Llama real quick. I hope to see a day where we have all the other, um, you know, non, non uh, Pulse Chain official, uh, you know, pieces to the ecosystem, liquid loans and, you know, you got nine inch, you got all the, the pH protocols and all that stuff too. I want to see a day where there's, this is in the billions, Pulse X in the billions and they're in, maybe they're in the billions too. They're in the hundreds of millions. They're like, they've really racked up the liquidity, the TVL and all that stuff. Um, but I think the majority of people, when they're getting on board, they're going to use the official apps. And then later on when they learned about other stuff, Hey, they want to go, you know, try other things too. But um, I love to see people building on it, but I think I think it's strategic. Again, like I don't even think I'm not even excited for limit orders on PulseX because I'm already using a community project that I like to do it. But I know everyone, you know, the people new to the ecosystem, they don't think the same way I do. They think, oh, new feature. Oh, this thing has development. Oh, there's something new and fresh. Hey, there's something to get excited about. Let me read, you know, that kind of stuff.